Lord. What's the first thing in your mind? Right. Mona Lisa. However, until 20th century, there was nothing so special about this picture. It was just one of the many hours when you visit pictures in museum. So what made it so famous? The one of the most famous pictures in the world. Answer simple, it's criminal. <laughs> so, let's start from the beginning. According to a worldwide brief, more than half of released prisoners become recidivists. What does it mean? It means if somewhere a crime was committed, most probably it was committed by a previously convicted person. But why is it so special and important to identify criminals? For this we have three reasons. First one, it would be easy just to prove his guilt in the court. Second one, for a recidivist, the guilt should be more strict. And the last one, if the suspect is already wanted for previous committed crime. Mutilation and human braiding it was a normal practice of criminal identification for thousands of years. The things got worse. The hands cut off, the heretics lost their tongues. So, in the 19th century, in the beginning of the 19th century, the practice of mutilation almost completely disappeared from Europe. In that time, the success of investigation completely relied on the talent and experience of the investigator. So, one of the most experienced was Francois Widog. It was the first director of crime detection police in France and formal criminal. He personally could recognize more than a thousand criminals in Paris and in 1825 he came up with the idea just to set a special index cards for each prison person. So it was it included the habits, the how to how they work this criminal and his portrait. It was so simple, it was systematized by the name in alphabetical order. So simple and effective but just for a short period of time. From 11 to 27 March, a series of explosions happened in Paris. So it affected the house prosecutor and judge who worked on the case against anarchists. At that time, police found out what the bomber was someone who called himself Francois Ravachon. They printed the description of his appearance in newspapers and tried to, to find this card with this guy, someone who looks like from the previous convicted person. However, in 1892 there was more than 5 million in these cards. And since to only way to find and identify criminal, it was by the name. Surprise, criminals don't always tell the real names. <laughs> so, it was impossible. Then, that's just a few thousand of index cards. It's possible to check all of them and to identify a person. But if it's more than 5 million, never works. So at that time, French police, with the huge cabinets, filled these index cards, just turned out to be useless. But there was one who knew and knew how to solve this problem. It was Alphonse Bertillon. He started his career in 1879 as a file clerk and all days long he just filled these cards with descriptions. The same description of a completely different where people just drove him crazy. It was a description like middle height, normal face, or no distinction marks, something that could fit to any of us. So it was quite useless. And he proposed to use 11 measurements identification system. Uh, he thought it would, it would be unlikely for any to person to share the exact sizes of different body parts. So, for example, like height, arm span, trunk. And he made some measurements in last until prison. A few months later, he came out what the different people could share different sizes and different parts of bodies. But four or five or six measurements simultaneously never happened. So, how to systematize he just took the first parameter, it's 8, put it from the lowest, shortest one to the highest one, and split it in three equal groups to the short, middle, and high. 
Then he took the next parameter and in this each group split it in three parts. So, for example, if you have 270,000 index cards of criminals, we just split them in three groups, each one is 90,000. When we take the next parameter, it's arm span, split it in three groups, now 30,000, then next parameter, trunk, etc., etc. In the end, after 11 measurements, it's going to be just a few files in one folder. In that time, there was no simple system for mugshots. Mugshot is a picture of a person made for police records. So he's, he standardized it as well. Every virtual card included one profile picture and one full face picture. It was breakthrough in criminalistics. Brilliant idea, but there was one problem. He was an awful speaker. None of the authorities could understand his explanations and none of them wanted to implement it. So he failed, but he continued to work on this system. Back to Paris, 1882. François Rabachon was caught in one of the restaurants in Paris and with the, 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 the help of Bertillon, it turned out that François Rabachon, in reality, it was Königstein. It was wanted criminal whom Bertillon measured in prison like two or three years ago. So only after this case, Bertillon Nashfeld code was recognized and implemented in France and then all around the Europe and the world as well. However, even this system was far from, far from ideal. 22nd August 1911. Somebody knows what happened, no? Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre. So this case was investigated by uh, Bertillon. In that time, there was no records, at all no records for any uh, restorers or photographers who just took pictures from museum to work with them. So even the authorities of the loop, they understood what the picture was stolen only in two days. So the criminal could be anyone. The only trace what was found, it was a fingerprint on the frame. In that time, these index cards were already included fingerprints of the criminals. However, the whole system was systematized by anthropometric measurements. So it was completely impossible to file to find the same fingerprints out of millions of cards. Investigation and then nowhere. It would be funny because in that time the dactyloscopy uh, or fingerprints systematization already existed and it worked in almost all around the world, except one country, you know which one. Go back. Bengal, India, 1892. Uh, General Inspector of uh, Police in Bengal, Edward Henry, he tried to teach uh, Indian officers to make proper and accurate measurements for Bertillon card system. However, he failed. Lack of education among officers caused a lot of failures and a lot of mistakes, so it was useless. He tried to find a simpler way to identify criminals, and he found it. Uh, inspired by the article, scientific article, what every popularity drawing is unique for every person, he found a way how to systematize it. So, every fingerprint could be divided in three groups, our groups, our parts, our roles. So, how to uh, understand which one is what? We have in loops only one delta. Delta is a triangle area where the ridges radiate in three different uh, directions. Words have two of them, here and here for example, and arcs have none of them. If you have a look at your fingers, almost most of you, you have loops. 60% of all fingerprints, it's loops. A little bit less in words and arcs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting. It takes some time. But it's better to do in the pause because it's, it takes some time. Yeah. Since the arcs only 5%, we can unite them with works in one group and just to transfer this data to numeric one. So, for example, for loop and arcs, we give a zero, for work is one. And then we have a special telescopic formula, which looks like this. There's LPF, it's variable for left pinky finger, for left. Uh, ring and finger, middle finger, etc. and the same for right hand. 
So, if we just put a variable dependently on which uh, drawing, propeller to drawing we have in this formula, we will have some numbers. So, for example, here the popularity drawings of this hand, so uh, W is walls, L is loops, R, A is arms. So, in this formula, if our left pinky finger is four, so we just put one here. Here's the loop, 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 loop for, for our, so here is zero. And the same for the right hand. Here the middle finger is more, so we put one here. And in the end we have the folder with the name 17, upper 6. So we just put this, this criminal with these fingerprints in the folder which names 17, upper 6. The maximum what could be is 32 in numerator. It means what all fingerprints are balls, and the minimum could be one. It means what all of them or other loops have arms. So we have 32 different options for left hand, 32 for right hand, and we have 1024 different folders. It was a way how it was systematized in that moment. This dactyloscopic system was firstly implemented in India. Three years later, in British Empire and all around the world, except one country. Yeah, it was France. <laughs> and you know the reason why? The French didn't want to use British invention. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 2nd December 1914, police caught somebody who tried to sell Mona Lisa to Antiquarian. His fingerprints was the same as the fingerprints on the frame. So, they found uh, his index card in Bertolt system, and it turned out to be a recidivist and that Vincenzo Perugia. And they had his fingerprints in that card. So the crime of the century could be solved in two hours instead of two years. It was a shame to Bertolt and all the friends, and in a few months they implemented the telescopy in France as well. What about Mona Lisa? Mona Lisa went missing for two years. All this time the press called it the most, most significant picture in the world. They just uh, they, uh, invented a fun fiction about it. They speculated on, it, on her smile. In the end, just the failure of French police made such fame for Mona Lisa, but it's still bringing millions and millions of tourists to the world. Thank you.